podcast. You can hear it everywhere. You can hear it on iHeartRadio. It's called Wake the Flock Up. Right, Funkhauser? Say that one more time. Nice Wake and slow. Wake the Flock Up. And I think flock is not spelled with a C. It's wake F-L-O-K. the flock up. And if you're like me, into uh, sort of like, I guess, independent hip-hop, or just uh, the true art of hip-hop, you know, people that actually believe in lyrical ability, and people that actually believe in being able to spin a yarn, and people that actually believe in making hip-hop with artistic merit, uh, people that believe in all the qualities that made hip-hop the great art form it was in uh, probably the early 90s, and uh, well, some of that shine has fallen off in the world of commercial hip-hop, but in in terms of independent hip-hop, there's some truly great artists that aren't getting near enough attention in, in this day and age for doing this sort of thing. And to the best of my knowledge, Concept 714, the host of that show, he's going to be on the show tomorrow sitting in with us talking about what he does. I'm very, very excited about that. But to the best of my, my knowledge, he does the only sort of real long-form show slash podcast for independent hip-hop interviews. He had uh, Ari the Rugged Man on. He had Wax on. And he just sits down with him for sort of like, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half till he's done. And they talk about everything. And, man, if you are a person that likes to get into someone's head, if you have a favorite artist and you like to get into their head, their psyche, their creative process, why they do what they do. Concept 714 does a really, really good job at that. He's uh, one of my favorite new shows. I've been listening to him regularly, and uh, we're stoked because he's, he's coming on the show. And you know I'm excited because I consider you more of an East Coast hip-hop head, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like an East Coast international. And from what I understand, Concept 714 is a little bit more West Coast, so it's going to be interesting to hear you guys spar back and forth about, like, your thoughts about hip-hop. You know, um, I, I yeah, you, you know, it's very, very interesting. The guy across the hall from me is from San Francisco and programs a hip-hop station, and we talk about rap music all the time. And uh, we don't really get into it a whole lot on this show, but, like, if I have a favorite type of music... Well, that's uh, that's right up there. Um, and we, we talk about our favorite rappers all the time. And I would always talk about someone like Karis One, who, who I think, for me, pound for pound, he's my favorite MC of all time, just because of his ability to say what he says, but then also his ability to you know, say it in a way that just makes you want to throw chairs around and start a mosh pit. It's really, really interesting stuff. And I brought that up to my West Coast buddy's attention, and he was like, you kidding? Nah, I never liked him. Cheesy. And then he played me some god-awful stuff from the Bay Area. I was like, this doesn't count as music. And uh, I see how, um, I see. I, you know what? It's Having like talked about our KRS personal taste in hip-hop. versus E-40. Something like that. Yeah, it's just, and, and, ta- and, and realizing what a huge gap we had in our personal musical taste. I saw how Biggie and Tupac happened. I got it. I was like, oh, so that's how the divide originated. Now, obviously, we can all agree on stuff like Ice Cube. But nevertheless, I, I, you're, you're totally right. I do think that there's a little bit of a divide between East Coast and West Coast, which I always thought was more of a, more of a 90s thing. Um, but apparently, it's li- alive and well today. And we're really excited to have Concept 714 on the show tomorrow. And we'll... Uh, We'll get into all manner of things. Right now, though, Funkhauser, unless you have anything to add about uh, the glories of bothering Madonna, did you text me that picture you took of her I, I that did, uh, yeah, her, 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 her security guards got all mad about? Oh, let's see. I get uh, the studios in a, in the part of a building where I get absolutely no service. So let's see if it uh, let's see if it comes through. Uh oh, the clouds are moving in. I think we <laughs> I think a- we've disrupted the Madonna gods. Uh huh. That's uh. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah, yeah. It's very blurry. That's all I can and, get, uh, man. Yeah, that, that's absolutely like this is one of the best examples of a creeper photo I could ever <laughs> uh, come across. Like, it honestly looks like you were getting shoved out of the way by security guards as you were taking it. It's a real action shot. That's truth. And uh, she does look short. One th- the one of the few things I can make out from this is that she uh, looks like she's wearing shoes with heels on them. So she looks short and she's wearing heels. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes, interesting. Well, you have now uh, officially gotten closer to Madonna than uh, I think I ever will, especially because I'm associated with you. And um, now, now I'm probably on a list with Madonna's <laughs> security guards. <laughs> Watch, I'll get blamed for it. You'll get in, tra- you know, like you'll get bothered and it'll come back to me. It's like, uh, we understand the producer on your show. There goes that Madonna well, interview. Yeah, yeah. And she was so excited to come on the show. 
<laughs> All right. What, what what else? Do you have any more stories from backstage? Uh, yeah, I'll sprinkle some in here and there as I remember them. A lot happened. Uh, okay. Oh, my God. But we have, like, real news. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go on. Like, let's, let's hit it with the real news. Like, One Direction news. Uh, oh! One Direction performed Saturday night for the first time since... Zane Malik left. All right. Is it Zane? Is it Zion? I take pride in having no effing uh, idea dude. how the hell this guy's name is pronounced. I don't know. I don't One know. of the guys from One Direction left. They performed for the first time without him the other night. It was an emotional night. Their mascara never stopped running. Boy, how easily replaceable does it say you are if they're just like, okay, we know you left the band, but eh, whatever. <laughs> We're just going to continue playing shows. I guess, like, is there a lead singer in that band? I don't know. You know, I don't know a single One Direction song. I or thought maybe One I Direction do. I just don't... was what O-Town changed their name to. <laughs> O-Town. You remember that I, crappy uh, band? Well, yeah, no, I know that crappy band because, like, when uh, O-Town went the way of the Dodo, um, one of the guys in, in O-Town was always up at this uh, um, recording studio where I made an album. Um, he was always sort of like in there working on demos for his solo record. And um, he had a bit of an entourage. And they're like, yeah, yeah, this guy from Motown. We're working on his solo record. I was like, I don't know anything about this project. I don't know what he's doing. I, I don't know the, what the music sounds like. But I'm telling you this now, it will never come out. And, he's still uh, working on it to this day. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if it ever came out. I'm not sure if it ever came out. But um, if it did, no one knew about it. So that's sort of the same thing. I wonder, though, like, I mean, I in the world of boy bands, O-Town, probably, I, I get the, I get the, uh, I get the feeling that One Direction have F.U. money. Like, they really, like, they will have money for the rest of their lives unless they do something incredibly stupid. Is, is that the case, do you think? Probably, I mean, they yeah. seem to be, like, the hugest thing on the face of the planet. There's no way that can end badly for any of them unless it's, you know, in a dead, bloated, on the toilet Elvis sort of way. get into the news and then a little later on in the show we'll talk about uh email gate that hillary clinton's going through 
The next Friday the 13th movie will explain why Jason can't die. Uh, spoiler alert. I believe it happens at the end of the movie when he takes off his mask and reveals that he is, in fact, Keith Richards. <laughs> Go on. That guy's like 150. Yeah. Uh, the Grateful Dead topped a Rolling Stone poll of the best jam bands. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Chosen because of their longevity, their musicianship, and because, let's be real here, Rolling Stone readers are all over 50 and have no imagination. And they're all what else? stoned. They're all, yeah. Uh, Kelly LeBrock's jacket from Weird Science is auctioning for 35 grand. Which is weird. Because, you know, I saw online that you can actually buy Kelly herself for like five. <laughs> The years have not been kind. You know what's weird? You know what's what's interesting? I guess Kelly LeBrock is like 55 now, I think. Because when I saw this, I actually it was like, to the internet we go. Let's find out how Kelly's looking. Can you really sort of buy her for five grand the way I postulate? And um, she's looking good, but she's 55. Weird Science came out in the 80s. So what? what is that? Minus, like... What what year did Weird Science come out? Funk Hazard. Uh, like how how old was she when she did Weird Science? Another movie I have not seen. Are you kidding me? Yeah, sorry, I'm looking it up. Weird Science. I know Oingo Boingo is in that. He didn't they do the the theme song? For, it's a John Hughes, not, 1985. So thirty uh, years 1985. ago. So exactly thirty years ago, and she's fifty five now, which means Ooh, she was twenty five then. Mm. She was 25 then. And what what's interesting to me is like the uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel as though there's there is a, uh, a premium placed on looking youthful in this day and age. And I suppose there always has been a little bit a little bit of that. But in uh, in weird science, we're made to believe that she's this kind of like older, you know, because she's older than the, uh, the the high school kids she's hanging around with, um, that she's this older, sophisticated woman. And I would have guessed she was significantly older than, I, I didn't think she was supposed to be in her 20s. I didn't think she looked like she was in her 20s. She was like jaw-droppingly hot, but um, it didn't look as though she was uh, supposed to be someone as young as 25. And uh, what I find to be interesting about that is just the, the switch, how I, I, I'm guessing in the 80s, there was a bit more of a premium placed on womanhood, on a woman being attractive. And, you know, I, like now I think everyone's just, you know, I, I think in the world of entertainment, females are constantly trying to look like they're frozen in time at age 18 to 21. And uh, there it was just sort of celebrating the glory of a mature woman who knew how to handle herself. That's kind of like the uh, the vibe I got from it. And now people are sort of perpetually trying to appear as though they're college co-eds. And I don't know. Uh, it's weird how, how much more youth obsessed we've become in entertainment. Uh, conversely, I think we've gone the opposite direction with men, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, uh, like Clooney, Clooney, or uh, you know Liam Neeson. Like it, it used to be back in the day to be an action star, you had to be young, gish. You know what I mean? Like, and how old is he? He's in his, like, it, like it's a it's a story about a 50-year-old guy or guys in his 50s that, that go out and kill people. Like, you don't think of an action hero as being an older dude, which, uh, I mean, how, again, to Google we go. How, like how Harrison is Ford is in his 70s, right? Yeah. Bradley Cooper is 40. Um, and he, uh, you know what I, I think is interesting about that? Bradley Cooper is 40. I, I think what happens is it takes a certain point now, you know, like it's so hard to be successful in any kind of entertainment whatsoever now. It, it's so, and when someone's got an audience, when someone's got a following, when, when, you know, someone is a name, like that's worth a tremendous amount of money. People would be like, oh, I'm a fan of him or her. I'm going to go see them in that movie. And what's interesting about that one is I think the reason, you know, sort of like people like Clooney and people like, Bradley Cooper and people like Liam Neeson get sort of hired to play these roles that probably, in theory, should be going to much younger men. Like, I mean, you know, just Bradley Cooper's playing that guy, Chris Kyle, who was not 40 um, during the, uh, unless I'm very much mistaken, wasn't anywhere close to 40 during the during the period of his life that the movie's about. And uh, 
I, I think it's just because, you know, Bradley Cooper, it, it took him till he was about 40 years old.